Welcome to the headquarters of the World Health Organization in Geneva, Switzerland, where today we began the first day of the ICD-I camp, a two-week-long process in which we're actually going to begin the 11th revision of this monumental document. We opened the meeting this morning with an opportunity for all the participants to introduce themselves to each other and to the group at large. I'd like to introduce Donna Pickett. Um, she's from the North American Collaborating Centre on the US side. She works at the National Centre for Health Statistics where she's lead on morbidity. She's been involved since ICD-8, so she's, she's the woman to ask. Um, it's all her fault. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Roberta Cardiff, not from Cardiff, but from uh, Toronto. She lives in Tokyo. She worked before that for 15 years at the National Centre for Classification and Health based at the University of Sydney. Uh, she has three boys, 25. 23 and 18 years old. Um, I didn't ask her about children and divorces, but she can tell you that herself. <laughs> Following all the introductions, we first heard a presentation from Dr. Baderhan Ustin, the coordinator of the Classifications, Terminologies, and Standards Technical Unit here at the World Health Organization. He gave us a historical perspective on how the revision process has happened in the past. He went into details, such as the key point that on the 10th revision, all of the process was actually held behind closed doors. And it was essentially done in the decibel method of revision, which means he who speaks loudest, last, or longest gets his way. Now, I tell you what we want to do. This is just a dream vision. We really want to have an internet-based platform open to all people in a structured way. If anybody wants to contribute to ICD, it shouldn't be restricted to those people who were fortunate enough to be designated by their governments to come to Geneva. Bringing some people, like real experts like Yashu, I think that is where it is important that the content experts could have a say in the construction. We've brought experts from all over the world in for this two-week-long ICAMP, the culmination of five years of work, where we can get started and really moved into the next century. One of the important things that we're doing this time is we're creating a go-to-meeting platform which allows us to get a collaborative effort from all of these different experts, but not necessarily demand that they be in Geneva the entire time. But this two-week process is going to get us started towards this next step. Following the presentation by Dr. Ustin, we next heard from Dr. Robert Jacob, a technical officer also in the classifications, terminologies, and standards department. Well, that is what is behind the scenes. In the front of the scenes, things look much nicer. Dr. Jacob has been very busy synthesizing information from all over the world, from WHO collaborating centers, from national and clinical modifications of the ICD, and from existing knowledge sources to prepare us to work on the ICAT, the project that's coming up next. If ICD had a problem, it was that it lacked definition. It contained a list of classifications, of titles, but no definition of what those titles actually meant. So essentially, interpretation of the codes were left up to the user. ICD-11 is seeking to remedy that problem. The new content model, which contains 16 different parameters, such as temporal patterns, signs and symptoms, diagnostic classifications, will seek to create a broader classification, a wider source of information available for users as they seek to use the ICD-11 in their work. So now the experts know what they're doing, but they have to learn how. We had a presentation by Dr. Tanya Tudorak, who presented on the platform, which will allow collaborative work and seek to bring all of this information together. We call it ICAT. This ICAT is an interesting tool. You know, it does so many things that we wouldn't have done otherwise. I would very much like to show the content that I am interested about the, the diseases of the circulatory system, say myocardial infarction. Here it is, ischemic heart diseases. Now, it gives definitions of ischemic heart disease, but I want to go to myocardial infarction, so I click on the plus sign, and we got the ischemic heart diseases, acute myocardial infarction. Okay, it's got no definition. So then we would have to create a d definition by going under add, a, add new value. Great, so let me do that. Okay, I have to sign in to edit, of course. So under add new value, Okay, we can type in the definition for myocardial infarction. Okay, let's type it in. Uh, myocardial infarction is an ischemic disease of the heart. heart. This is the definitional status. This collaborative authoring tool, based on Protege, is a web-based platform that will allow input from experts all over the world without demanding that they be in the same location. It will also allow us 
to glean information from existing sources to incorporate into this new model. Now the fun part is over. Tomorrow the rubber hits the road. The experts are actually going to have to do it. They start out in the morning by having to define two of these diagnostic classifications. We'll see how it goes.